Honestly, it's so hard to speak on Harry and Meghan. It's so hard to watch them on the main stage in there's so many feelings at, at, at play for, for, for most at this point. So we watch them speaking upon mental health. Mental health, these two. When the world look on and see such unbalance with everything they do, everything they've done, the way they behave, the way their children haven't got a stable around them, families, no families around, four families that could be a part of these children's lives, where are they? Spencers, the Markles, the, the royal family, the Raglans, just one person, that's one person, that's all they can, they, they, they can forge a bond with. When we've watched them have all the love and support, we know what what Thomas Markle gave. We know what King Charles gave. We know what Harry went through. And here's the thing, if I could scream to Harry out loud, it would be go and touch some grass, go and dip in to a bitter reality rather than living in this delusion, this Hollywood elite. Go and Google Go for Miz. Go and see the tragic stories that people face on the daily, but how in an instant their grief, their sadness is taken over by their poverty because not all are born with a bank of dad. Not all have got a palace to back them up and keep that title over their head. This this bad, bad man which you speak on, who still protects you to this very day. Go and have a look at the people that have lost but in that instance of having that loss, in that moment of grief, it's taken over. But how am I going to pay to say goodbye? How am I going to give them the send-off they deserve? And here comes the community, the family and how they wrap their arms around around them because they understand also what it is to be sat in poverty, what it is to experience that pain. And they all come together to donate, to give, to help alleviate that tragedy in that give that support to these people who are on the actual floor, you know? And I feel like Harry's been on the floor at time, and I'm sure we're gonna see him on the floor again as his wife now starts the process of stepping away because apparently she wants him just to be free. She doesn't want him to be, you know, following these lawsuits. Right, I've been in, I've watched, I've watched every part of what one can do to another and not just my story and a woman's refuge and how they build you up, they support you on the way up and the minute it starts to crumble, they come out, they separate, they gaslight you and make you believe that it was all on you. We've watched her drape herself, sat next to him, applauding him. She is every part to why he has taken those court cases on. And she has been in his ear. It's so blatant, it's so obvious. But then I see him and her speaking upon mental health on a stage in a plight that affects so many. And so many you'll probably find on those so go GoFundMe's. You know, were they, they, the families are left devastated. And we've got these two, these two people who don't actually use Archie well to invest in anything that can change or make difference to this plight. They just bring their face, their name, their pain to smother it over someone else's for their end game of fame because that's what we've watched them do. That's what we've come to know them to do. Mental health. When I see Harry and Meghan speaking on mental health, I feel about, is drawn in. When I see Harry and Meghan speaking on mental health, I instantly think of Thomas Markle sat as time is ticking by with these regrets Oh, in his mind, what did I do wrong? How come? Am I ever going to see my daughter again? Am I ever going to meet my grandkids? The on a loop as he's being attacked by the people, the same me people, they speak on the social media and how bad it is. The ones that attack him, who create threats against his life for once being a dad and adoring his daughter so much and how she created this media storm to keep them safe and project hate their way.
When I see Harry and Meghan speaking about mental health, I think of the Queen who, who built a legacy in remaining loyal to her country and name, who spends her end days in that way. Philip also, who watched his wife in how she, he couldn't, he couldn't, he was too old to interject. They couldn't reach Harry enough, you know, to stop him, leave, look what you're doing to your family. When I think of mental health, I feel a Prince William in how he had these relations with his brother and we see them so natural, so natural and easy. You know, this back and forth for one another in how he's now in a position where he's got these feelings towards his brother, no doubt anger and rage, and he don't know what to do with him, but his wife's there who he needs so desperately to save, who is also having those attacks from those people on social media that Harry and Meghan use a stage as someone else's plight to speak on. Go in, Google, go fund me. Touch grass, understand what people go through because you two are the last, last people. Not to mention all the people like me who have been invited in as they cashed in so happily, who have been brought into this catastrophic event of two brothers we adored and loved to watch the heartache as they continued on a loop to project. You know, there's so many, so many, the hypocrisy to watch two people who have chose to place themselves and attack everyone else on the main stage were not giving a damn about anyone's mental health as they just grace their presence. And we've, we've seen them do it before at New York Mental Health Week, that campaign, remember? The cream stage, so opulent and elite with Archie Wall taking over the main spotlight in a semicircle behind them. Oh, we are here, we have arrived. What have you done since? Is this, this is the only time I've seen you since that day speaking or acting upon anyone else's mental health other than your own. Because that's what people see. And that's why people don't get it. And here's the thing when they're doing their interview, and this is where it all seeps out because the narcissist doesn't understand. And I spoke briefly on this yesterday in how she's happy in the limelight, all eyes on me. Then Harry, it's his turn to speak. And oh my God, the disgust, the disdain, the the, the mass slips as the... She can't even, she can't even pretend in him prior to that moment where she's in her element doing what she does, lost in a glare, lost in this delusion that they're in. And these two are speaking about mental health to our young, the most vulnerable in... Oh, in how... I strike a comparison in how Harry is meant to be happy and then now the most happiest he's ever been. In all before was just a lie, a smokescreen projected to the world to keep the royal family ticking by. When actually, you know what, if you were acting happy before, how come you can't pull in the same tactics in the now, Harry? You know, I think Harry needs to question himself. Where did it all go wrong? When did my life change so bad? And was all my memories that bad? Did I really not have connections with my family? How come it's become all fixated on the media and, and my mom? And look around you, look in your wife's wardrobe, look at every part of your life since she stepped in. And maybe, just maybe, your brother, when he told you to slow down, was right. Obviously, these are my opinions, my thoughts shared to you. As someone that lives abuse, who finds myself in this conflicted stance of being a person of the UK, watching two brothers, who find myself just mind boggled. And the world we live in today is pretty messed up. But to watch these two sitting on a stage and cashing in on another's pain yet again, to bring their face when we watch them actually not use their platform for anything around this to really tackle that pain. Crazy.